Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, this one is about pricing windows. I'm uh, just uh, answering Hugo to slip. We've written, and I'm going to add the text here, but we're writing a little ebook and cleaning it up so that everybody can put it a part of their SOP if they like it. Certainly, it's a reference point. There are many different ways to price windows. But there's money in glass if you clean it fast. So that's the key. Like the step to pricing windows is to cleaning windows fast. Hugo, this is triggered by you, right, for your request. So I'll see if I can get some of this down pat and then um, I'll fire this off to my video guy and then we'll turn it into something which is much less uh, verbose, let's say. But I'm actually looking for your feedback as well. Whatever you can add to this um, for us, we'll add, even if there's other methods and we can articulate them well, then we can add it to um, to a video training and to the um, and to the ebook. yeah? So this is the method that I use. This is the building, this is where I live here. So this is the building that I'm gonna use um, yes, thanks. Yeah, good man. And look at me, I'm all dressed up. Dude, whew, smart. Actually, I'm going to a family reunion. No, I don't think I ever actually pulled a real video together, Hugo. So let's have a look at this. This is the building. I'll switch the... You can just see the view. This is not pollution. Um, China Air is pretty clean these days. But this is uh, just, it's probably, you know, it was raining yesterday. It's probably going to rain again today. So that's just, uh, that's just rain and stuff, okay? All right, so let's get good early morning. Yeah, I'm getting ready to, I've got to go to another city, so I'm going in the fast train, so. Here we go, I'm gonna come across here. Uh, this, oh, oh, I've got a little surprise for you. Look at that baby, latitude 35. Oh, this is one of my ideas. Those of you who, do, who use Reach It, and you're thinking of window weapon or larger brush, smaller brush, you know, carrying two brushes. I'm wondering if we shouldn't make a gunslinger for the second brush so you can just switch it out. Let me know if you think that's a good idea. But actually, this one here is called Monsoon, right? And it is a big beast of a gunslinger. This one's too tall, right? So you can see it side by side. I haven't got the little you know, the little release so you can clean the clean the reservoir. But this is an Unger Monsoon, right? It's a big two inch round mop. And you can see, let me see if I do this without looking horrible. But you, that's got loads of room in there. It's not gonna scrape the sides, right? That's the most important thing for these bigger mops is they don't have that tight cavity. So we increase this cavity to the biggest cavity ever. And then for the guys, Latitude 35, which is Los Angeles across through Houston, Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona, Houston, Texas, and across to Jacksonville, that's Latitude 35, right? So these guys will be able to carry a load of water and you'll see the sides are very close to straight so it won't slosh and splash out the sides. Okay, that's not the topic, but I just thought I'd show you because I'm really excited about that. Leslie Schmidt is here. Brian Gibson is here. <coughs> okay. So let's have a look at a building like this. The key to pricing is to establish a base rate which is based on your socio-economic area. What that means is AB demographics and CD demographics. And there's a difference. Um, you know, if you're in Maryland, you could have a base rate of $10 a window. Bill Walsh is here. Yeah, thanks Bill. <laughs> you just keep cracking along. So Maryland is a different socio-economic. I mean, those guys, you know, I've, I've seen guys say that they got, you know, a $500 tip. Dude, there's guys who never do a $500 job, you know, let alone get a tip for that. So when I was in Sydney, I started with $3 and I recommend starting with $3. There's a very big difference, um, there's several points. The guys that clean windows like Florida, down, you know, that Latitude 35, they clean, clean windows all year round. So it's quite different how they have to fund their business. They got income 52 weeks of the year, let's say 50 or 48. But the dudes up and um, right up at the top there, um, uh, like like Buffalo, New York, and going into Canada, um, those guys are looking at you know 30 week window cleaning years and 36 week window cleaning years. So their pricing is quite different because they've got to actually fund a year um, with 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 a short amount of um, cleaning time. Yeah. So if you start with three, but you already know what your base rate is, and then what we're going to talk about is you know what 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 is cleaning a window. It doesn't matter how big the piece of glass is. That bigger piece of glass is bigger than that piece of glass. That will take, in real terms, about the same amount of time as that. The thing to understand, it's the frame that slows you down. 
So that's why we do pricing by frame. We don't do pricing by square meter of glass because I, can, I promise you, I can clean that, you know, fractionally more time than that. Because the, the thing is you have to focus around the edges, focus into the corner, focus down the side, focus in the corner. You know, so that's, that's where the time is. And then bing, 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 inside is clean. Now, you're trying to get to one stroke action, one pass on the glass, or two passes on the glass. If you're doing storefronts, for example, and you're cleaning them once a week, then you should, short of anybody, you know, throwing an egg at the window or something, you should be able to just, you know, if you were doing traditional tools, you'd run your mop over the glass. Good morning, Dante. Right-hand man in the United States, right there. So if you were just passing over that and it was a storefront, you were cleaning it once a week, then you'd run your mop efficiently. So you're only passing over the window once. And then you'd run, Brett Thompson is here, and then you'd run your squeegee as efficiently as possible only over the glass once. And so it is with a water-fed brush. If you can, you know, so you know the reach-it technique up to the center, across the corner, down the frame, up to the center, across the corner, down the frame, and then take out the middle. The, the wider your brush, the less strokes it takes to take out the middle, move on to the next frame if it was, you know, always a regular clean. Now, if it's a first time clean, whatever, then you might have to do that twice with a regular, you know, all rounder brush or something like that. However, if this is filthy and never been cleaned forever, like this, you know, so if it's like this, that's where window weapon comes in. If a window weapon specializes, and, I, and this is not a, a promo for that, it's just to try and help you understand the maths. Window weapon specializes in non-water soluble concretions, excretions, and pollutions. So it'll take them off in the same action that you would have taken if the window was clean, right? So you increase the aggressiveness of the abrasive agitation phase in order to reduce the number of strokes required in order to reduce the amount of time taken, right? So that you can actually clean windows faster. So it's, it's a, you know, pricing is not just about how much am I gonna charge for this job because you're looking for the highest hourly rate you can get how you clean that window is, yeah, <laughs> this is filthy. I am gonna, I've been saving this. I've been waiting for a nice sunny day and I'm gonna clean all this. It's just disgusting. And then there's difficulty. So that's where, you know, you need premiums. Okay, so how do we price? I'm gonna use this wall here because it's a little bit easier just to, just to do the maths because maybe I'm not that good at maths. So if you think in, uh, in vertical terms, like, uh, like rope guys, you'd say how many drops are there, right? So you'd say that's a, that potentially that's a drop, 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 that's a drop. Each window is a drop. If you treat it like, I know, I know a rope guy can clean more than one window in a drop. However, basically you t talk in terms of drops to yourself. Uh, actually, this one's, uh, I wonder if there's a window behind those screens there, but you'll see that there are two windows there. So let, let's imagine that these are windows for the sake of the maths, right? So we would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's handy for me. So there's ten across, and then we'd say, okay, how many windows are there down? Now, you could talk cavities. Let's say that's a whole cavity. That's not what we want. What we want is paned pieces of glass. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we can come over here, seven, eight, and then we can come to the ground, nine, ten, right? So that's 10 by 10, yeah? 10 drops, 10 rows is 100 windows. But it's not, the, it's not the 100 windows. Now what we're gonna do, and you'll see I'm gonna give you this in print so you don't have to try and remember it or understand it from me too much right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna determine the difficulty of the windows, and this has actually got a lot of difficulty hidden in it, right? But, but the difficulty of the windows, if it was just normal so that we can just count it up, We'll say, well, ground floor is easy. You could do that with a squeegee. Joy is here. Hello, hello. All right, ground floor is easy. That's, so we can say that's just your base rate, $3, you know? Second floor is easy, normally, right? Unless there's landscape in the way, right? And we'll go and have a look at that. So second floor is easy, third floor is easy. Fourth floor, well, you know, we, we can put a premium on third floor because we know we're competing against a guy with a lift who's really gonna have to use a much bigger, um, sorry, a guy with a ladder. He's gonna use a much bigger ladder. He's gonna be slowed down by his ladder. So we would say base rate for second floor, base rate for third floor, uh, sorry, so, sorry, base rate for ground floor, base, this is a problem with life, right? Base rate for ground floor, base rate for fir second floor, base times 1.25 for third, base times 1.5 for fourth, 
and maybe base times two for fifth, right? Which basically increases, means that you can do it a little bit slower, it's a little bit more difficult, and anybody who's competing with you is gonna to have to be paying for a boom or a lift or anything else. So now we say, this is what we do. We go one plus, oh, no, we go one plus one because there's two rows, two rows of windows there, All right? One plus one is two, plus one is three, plus one is four. That's a window there, I missed that one. Plus one is five, plus so, uh, four. Okay, right. where's that second level? Yep, so I'd say that's four, right? To the, uh, there, no, five. One, two, sorry buddy, three, four, five. Five windows at the base rate, so that'll be five is, is, is five, right? Five times one is five. Then you've got one, two windows, one, two windows at 1.25, so that's gonna be 2.5, so 5 plus 2.5 is 7.5. Then you've got one, two windows at 1.5, so that's three, so that's 10.5. And then you've got two windows at two, so that's four, so that's 14.5. So we'll say there's 10 drops at 14.5 as your multiplier. So that's 145 times three, 145 times three, 320, 435 if I get that right. So, so we would bill, if that was not adding any extra difficulty, we would bill $435 for that glass there at a base rate of three. Now, if you think that's too cheap, use a base rate of four or five. If you think that's too expensive, use a base rate of two or 1.5, depending on where you are. There's a hell of a difference between Outback Iowa and Washington DC in what people pay and what people can afford and what it costs to live. You know, all, all the maths is, um, is, is uh, relative, right? So then you wanna just have a look at areas of difficulty. Now see that, that is an overhang of three feet. So those windows behind there are going to be well, I know, but you know, sometimes you gotta do it. I mean, there's big money here, buddy. Like if you haven't got, you know, two hours to do some calculations that you can bring in, you know, four or $5,000 job, then, um, then you have to stick to residential, okay? So here, now most water-fed guys can't get in there. And even the rope guys have, have a, it's a pain in the ass for them, right? So, excuse the, 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 uh, the, the vernacular, but, um, so in here, we would use max reach. So, so with a reach at pole, you'd, you'd have, let's say a warrior, and you'd take the number one section out, you'd put your max reach in, and then it will reach six foot horizontally. So we can clean all those with water fed in there. Did a little, little, little right? No, no problem at all. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's more times you read, uh, don't worry, I'll give it to you, right? So, so we can say, okay, we're gonna make that times three or times four, because nobody can do that. Only we can do that. So we're gonna clean up on that stuff, right? Then you've got to take into consideration this little baby here because that is nasty. This little tree here, I've got a, an eight foot gap here. So I'm either going to be, you know, wearing my prisms, I'm going to be looking straight up, but it's really hard to get pressure on the glass. Yeah, when, you, when you've got the pole straight up, it's much better to have it at 70 degrees. Or I've got to kind of clean on an angle. You know, I'm coming in like here, which we could do and come in on an angle on the other side. But either way, it's going to slow you down. So you wanna, you know, just add, I don't know, 30, 50 bucks. So you, when you're doing this, you can just take your time and do it properly and you know, you, you know you're charged for it, yeah? But you've gotta look at landscape. The other thing, by the way, is look at this landscape here. Because if you've got trip hazards, then you're gonna need a second worker. Yeah, you're gonna need a guy, like in order to maintain occupational health and safety, you need to maintain um, that somebody's looking at his feet because it's so easy to trip on a tube or trip on a rock or just, He'll just step over an edge and then, okay, 99% of the time, he's not gonna fall. But risk is measured as, as chance times consequence. So if the chance is, is 1% or 0.1% or 0.01%, it doesn't matter. If, the, if you multiply that times the consequence of a major catastrophe, guy falls over, pole drops, pole's out of control, pole falls on pedestrian, death can occur then your risk calculation, right? Your risk calculation. Your risk calculation is chance times consequence, anything times consequence, death, risk equals death. 
to be avoided at all costs. That's responsible occupational health and safety, whether it's your law or not your law, right? In our countries, it's increasingly law, like the Australian, New Zealand countries, you know, um, and, the, and Britain, it's like, Britain in the UK, if there is a way to do it safer, whether you know about that way or not, that way is law, right? So you can't claim ignorance and you can't, in Australia, we have the, uh, what's called the extended chain of responsibility, that you can't displace your your responsibility by using um, corporate entities and displacing through contractors and displacing through workers that are, you know, you know, running as contractors to the contractor, the facilities manager, the business owner who's got the contract where the money, the money chain, right? They follow the money chain down and everybody in there corporately and personally are liable in the event of an accident. Right, so that's possibly you know 10, 15 years from now where the states might end up, right? Because they're very good for the litigious um, culture. Okay, so <clears throat> remember this: there's money in glass if you can clean it fast. The key is to look at this glass and say, "How am I going to clean this?" Yeah. So let's start again. This is crazy difficult over there, right? We would probably, to clean that over this, if we can't walk on this glass, I think we can walk on this glass, but if we were to clean that from here, which is what, 20 feet, we would, we can step up here, I can see a straight line. So we would probably use this roof line as a fulcrum point, and then we would, you know, work that bottom window there. But you can imagine that's gonna take time. I would multiply that row, you know, times three. 10 bucks a piece of glass, you know, something like that. So you can just take your time and get it done. Then you get to here and you go, how do I clean straight on? Yeah, that's not easy, right? As soon as I get up to here, I'm back on base rate one, yeah? So it's just, all you've got to do, like once you know the number of drops according to the difficulty, then you determine what is the rate that I'm going to charge per row and then multiply that by the drops, multiply it by the the, the base rate that you've got. Okay, oh, here's a good example. This is actually great glass. Now, this glass here, like these are three inch millions. Yeah, they're gonna slow you down like crazy. Like you have to go around that, then you have to go over, then you have to go around that, then you have to go over, then you have to go around that. And even if it's that, that, it's the same. It, it's basically the same process. You have to go around and around and around. This kind of glass is gold right silicon clad there is a little bit of a lip there but it's silicon clad glass and i can clean 10 feet of that at a time if if i can walk in this case i could probably walk on that deck but i've got to think when i'm here i can't walk right so those panes of glass even those those ones are about six foot tall these ones here right and these are one foot and so normally we'd say one two three four five yep but because there's no frame actually, then I could just go one, two, three, or something like that. Now, a squeegee guy, he has to, he has to treat the frames, right? He can't just blast down like you can with a water-fed pole. So he's gonna be slower. So you might say, well, you know, I'm still gonna be way cheaper, so I don't have to give that money away just because I can do it faster because I've got the gear and the skills and the education and the hardships and <laughs> I've paid the price of the journey to where I am. Right, so in that case, you could you know, say, well, I'll do two of those for the price of one or something like that. But as long as you know that when, when there is no frame, you can, you know, if you could, you could actually clean, you know, a stroke like that. Now, I know it's impossible, but you know, the logic is there. You can get massive strokes. You could clean the top two windows in one stroke, the next four windows in one stroke, the next window in one stroke, the next four in one stroke like that. So as far as actually ascertaining, you know, there's money in glass if you clean it fast. The next thing I want you to focus on just quickly is um, understanding efficiency that 80% of the glass that you clean is, um, is either four stories and below or two stories and below. Sorry about me going across. So in this property here, even though this is, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, six stories, this building is six stories, but once you finish the six story, it's now five stories. Once you finish the five stories, it's now four stories. So 66% of this building is four stories and below. Half of this building is three stories and below. 
So even though you buy a really long pole and you think you're gonna get it really amazing, you, you're like, if you buy a six story pole, you're only ever gonna use the six story pole at six stories on one story on all six story buildings only once and then you take those extensions off and then you then you're on five stories right so there's very few people who get a lot of experience at six stories remy ballinger i think hugo you're one of them um you know but there's very few guys who actually do a lot of six story work who can tell you all the insides and outs that's what my specialty was i was in those days we were using hybrid poles i was a five story guy and you know i had a lot of experience cleaning at, at extreme heights with water fed so, but my tip is don't focus on, on, the, on the highest. That's the exception, right? You really want to focus on what's 80% of the glass that you clean and maximize your efficiency, maximize your technique, get your guys as fast as possible on the 80% of the glass that you clean. If you can increase your speed on 80% of the glass by 20%, right, is so different than being able to increase your speed on 2% of your glass by 20% as far as the net effect on your business. So with that in mind, don't worry about cleaning extreme glass slowly. It doesn't matter, you just gotta get it clean and you're gonna charge for it, yeah? Some other guy's gonna have to bring in a boom. Well, not here. So other guys have gotta bring in ropes, right? If it's safe or whatever, because you got the laws on the anchor points now, thanks to the IWCA, right? But there ain't no, there ain't no lift coming in here. Yep, <laughs> that's where I am. I'm way up in the sky already. Yep. So there's loads and loads and loads of variables to it, but the basic maths is you, you work your grid, you do your pricing, you can sketch it out on a piece of paper, and then you get your pricing and then you go back over it and say, well, what's easy and what's difficult? And then how am I gonna deal with what's easy? How am I gonna deal with what's difficult as far as getting my pricing right, yeah? Yeah. Yes. And look, some guys just love commercial work. You know, you gotta have big shoulders to do this kind of work. I used to have big shoulders. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. All right. So that's, um, that is it. That's enough for you guys, right? Oh, I did it again. Put my hand across. So, um, yeah. Any questions on this building or any questions on other buildings? You know, glass balustrades, you can do them you know, glass fencing, you can do them, you know, at base rate one, like that. And then, you know, you hit anything difficult, then you multiply it up. Okay, good. Yeah, I thought you were, Hugo. I thought you were a bit of a mover and shaker. But everybody finds, if you want to share what your way, <coughs> oh, condos is a little bit different, right? Because, well, it depends on the condo. If you have, so this is easy, right? Basically, you have a building here, which you could say is clad in glass. Right, it's a glass clad building. There, there are no, if you look at it, you know, where are the walls? There, that's a wall, what we would call a wall. There's a bit of wall there, you know, bricks. The rest of the building is clad in glass. Glass is the cheapest material to clad a building in, I do believe, right? So you'll see buildings like this, but some of the older buildings, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, maybe I could make a spreadsheet anyway, just a, a, a draft one. We, I think we'll make a little app actually some point. I've got somebody who can make some apps for me, but I haven't started yet. <clears throat> Maybe that's easy. So you just run your finger, you know, how many down, how many across, and then what's your base rate, and then is there a difficulty area, add orange, something like that. That's quite cool. What a good idea. Um, so, but if you're bouncing, you know, let's say, let's say you're actually cleaning windows, just one more thing, and then I'm going to go, because I don't want this to be too long, right? And I've got to go to this thing, right? Oh, so here, you know, you've got to bounce the, the, in this case it's a cavity, but if that was a raised part or whatever, or you've got to come across here, you know, then when you've got windows and then you've got bricks and then you've got windows and then you've got bricks and then you've got windows and then you've got bricks and then you've got windows like that. That is also a little bit, um, you know, that can slow you down and, you know, glass like this, by the way, you see we have power and control, like glass like this is perfect for power and control, the ergonomic handles that we developed, which means that you can, you can actually clean windows from the shoulders. I mean, it still works on, on this kind of glass because it's only a three inch mullion that you've got to bounce over and bounce over and bounce over. And then we do have a, a video on how to, how to get a, a brush across over the top of a frame. We call it jumping the brush. Um, so if you haven't seen that, then ask me and I'll drop it in here, anybody who's interested in commercial glass.
But that's it. Oh, Jacob Dell, you've come in at the end, buddy. I'm just going through pricing. But anyway, I will save it in HD and publish it again. And, uh, and uh, I'm going off to a family reunion for my, uh, my wife and my little boy today. They haven't got together for 10 years. Good evening, sir. Yes. I'll show you this. Oh, it's about on the way back to my place, Jacob. I've got Monsoon for, for Latitude 35 for the guys who actually do want to carry, like, Gunslinger was never designed to carry water. It's designed by a storefront guy who uses a bottle, squirts it on the mop, and then anything left on the mop is recovered into the bucket. So, but he doesn't reuse it, he just tips it out. So that's why it had a tip function, right? But then we found out with real customers from other parts of the world that um, some guys actually do want to carry water and they want to carry a lot of water. So that's where this guy's going to come into action. Look at that. I mean, this is going to carry, I don't know, it's going to be half a gallon or something. And that's an Unger Monsoon. And you can see that's going to, that can wobble in there, yeah? So that's not going to, you know, basically squeegee itself dry as it goes into the slot. Like in, in metric, that's a seven centimeter slot. Uh, the same possibly as a Poolex bucket, if you want to get a reference to one of the tools that you may know. And then there's no strap because you can't, once that mop is in there, you can't open the tip jar anyway. So we've basically got little finger tightening things here where you can release it and get in and you know take out a sponge if you've got a sponge in there, clean it out and then do it back up again and it's still gonna work with a perfect recovery all the way around, all right? This little baby here is similar, aimed at too tall, working with somebody on making a gunslinger just for wagtails, right? Because you can see some of the problems that that happens when they're on the swivels. Right, and then we've got one with the straps on the back and we've got one where we're actually gonna, you know, put the clip, fix it to the back. So we're getting there, one step at a time, right? One step at a time, one foot in front of the other. Okay, all right, so I'm out, that's it. I am, um, yeah, I thought you'd like that, Jacob. You, you have Bigfoot. Oh, nice, hope you get lucky, yeah. Um, Erica's here, good to see you, buddy. How are you? <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so I'm out, but do watch this. This is all about pricing, um, uh, pricing, 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 commercial windows like that. It's not a residential window pricing system. Okay, cheers guys.